Hey, welcome back. We're talking about Convij.js here. This is episode six. And in this episode, we're going to talk about optimizing for performance. Now, the Conva library is a good, fast, efficient library. You don't have to worry, for the most part, about optimizing for performance. But there are some inefficiencies sort of built in that it's up to us uh, to, to address. Uh, so let's take a look at what those inefficiencies are. OK, here we have, as you can see on the right side of the screen here, we have 20 stars. And they're all sort of randomly positioned around our little canvas area here. OK. And here's the code, of course, over on the left. OK, stage is normal. You don't need to go through all this. A layer, which I'm calling static layer instead of simply layer, for reasons that will become apparent in a minute. We're creating new stars here in a loop, as you can see, 0 to 20 or 0 to 19, I suppose. And here's the function that gets called. We're creating a new star here, OK, and we're moving it to the static layer. Uh, all right, we've seen all this before. Let me get rid of that. OK. That's spoiler, spoiler alert right there. I forgot to erase that. Okay, ignore that. You didn't see that. Okay, so uh, just to make the, these uh, stars a little bit more interesting, I've added a, a shadow here, as you can see on these stars. Uh, and you can see how to do the shadow here. It's these four properties shadow color, shadow offset, blur, and opacity, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you guys can get this, no problem. In any case, these are all draggable. So, all right. Here we are. We can drag around these stars. Great, wonderful, no big deal. So what is inefficient about this? Well, I submit there are two main inefficiencies here that we should be addressing. First, anytime we drag any one star around, it turns out that everything on that layer, every star, all uh, 20 stars, are actually being erased and redrawn once every frame, even though most of them, 19 of the 20, aren't really changing at all, OK? And that's because Conva when it redraws things during an animation, be it a drag animation or a tween or a custom animation, these are all types of animation, Conva does this by the layer, meaning it redraws everything. The second inefficiency is that each star on each redraw once every frame is being recalculated from scratch. That's right. All of these lines, these shadows, you know, these are some non-insignificant calculations and they're going on again and again and again, even though we're getting the same answer back each time, OK? So let's see what we can do about addressing these, about uh, uh, overcoming these inefficiencies. First thing we can do, let's talk about that recalculating business. We can do that very simply by saying, for each star as it's created, we're simply going to cache it. So what the cache does for us is essentially takes a snapshot, takes a photo of the uh, the star, in this case, the shape. And then when it needs to be redrawn, instead of recalculating, it just sort of rubber stamps it in place. Now, there's no loss of definition, of course. We can rest assured that now, uh, although all 20 stars uh, are still being uh, redrawn, which is still an inefficiency, at least they're not being recalculated from scratch. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering, wait a second, how do I know that they're cached? They don't look any different. We can see that they're cached by optionally passing in an object into the cache method here and setting the draw border property to true. And that will, as you would expect, draw a red border. It doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't imply red necessarily, it happens to be red. It draws a red border around the cached area on each star. Now, this is strictly for uh, development purposes. Never do this in production code, okay? This is just to make sure that, yes, the correct area, the correct region of the canvas is getting cached. Okay, so that's fine. So we can rest assured that those really are being cached and we can get rid of that now. The small price you pay for caching your shapes is that these shapes can no longer be edited. We can move them around in the same way that you can slide around a printed photograph on a tabletop, for example, but there's no way now on a cached shape to go in and edit what we might call internal properties like the, the, the star color, the fill color, or the stroke, or the number of points on the star like that. In fact, if we come into our uh, our loop here, our function, and after caching it, if we try to change its fill color to orange, it just doesn't work, okay? But if we come in here and get rid of that cache, then we have a bunch of orange stars now, don't we? Okay, wonderful. This might seem like sort of a, a disqualifying um, uh, measure here. I mean, after all, if you can't edit a shape once it's cached, you know, that seems like a severe limitation. Well, it turns out that cache comes with a sister method called clear cache, which does just that. Takes the cache shape and returns it to its uncached version. Now when we do it, each star here was cached momentarily and immediately clear cached. 
And that way, the fill, the change of the fill property here does show up in our code. Okay, so that is how, my friends, that is how you cache shapes. This is perhaps the biggest single optimization that you can make in Conva. You should be uh, caching your shapes religiously, okay? There's really no reason not to cache shapes at all. It's There's no performance hit, at least nothing that isn't just in the noise, and it makes a huge difference in terms of the overall performance, particularly more complicated applications. But let's move on to the second inefficiency. I suppose it was actually the first in order, and that is that these stars, even though they're cached, let me get rid of that, even though these stars are all cached, they are still uh, all being redrawn whenever we redraw. Now they're cached, so it's not nearly as big a deal as it was a second ago, but you know, uh, there are 20 stars, 19 stars plus the one are all in fact being erased and redrawn over and over again during any drag event. And again, we want to avoid that where possible. We can avoid that by adding another layer. Now, up to this point, we've always used a single layer. We've just been calling it layer. I made a mention, I made mention of the fact that you can use multiple layers. And here's where we're going to add a second layer. So watch as I add a second layer very quickly. OK, so what have I done here? We have our static layer. I'm also adding a second layer here, which I'm calling anim layer. And we're adding these both to the stage here in this order. This one will be added first, of course, this one second. Uh, so the anim layer will be superimposed on top of the static layer, OK? Then, OK, well, that's great. But if that's all we did, of course, you know, we, we'd have to, uh, we have to take care of moving the stars between the two layers depending on their state, right? So let's do this. Come down in here, and for each star, we're going to add a couple of event listeners. On the drag start event, here's a function, an anonymous function here, a fat arrow function. We're simply going to say that the star should move to the anim layer when we start dragging that particular star. And when we drag end, when that drag end event fires, we're going to move it back to the static layer. Now, if we come in here and drag around a star, okay? Again, nothing looks any different, but we can rest assured that this star, which I'm dragging around now, okay, is in fact on the anim layer, okay, and is the only, and because it's the only thing on the anim layer, uh, it is the only thing that's being animated, or redrawn, I should say. And the other 19, okay, which remain on the static layer, they are just sitting back, resting comfortably, twiddling their little starry thumbs. And this is about as optimize as you can get. Okay, we redraw that and we can assume that it is going back to the static layer. Okay, great, wonderful. That's really it, my friends. Um, yeah, so remember, cache your shapes religiously. There's no reason not to cache shapes. And uh, move your shapes dynamically between layers. I, typic I typically have two layers in any given project. One is for static stuff, maybe background images, for example, background colors or something. I don't know. Uh, which is never going to get redrawn, okay, at least not often. And then an anim layer or a layer on top of that for stuff that gets animated. And I move shapes judiciously between the two. You need a real good reason for using three or four or more layers. And Convo will warn you if you try and use six or more. I once had, I once went overboard and used, I think, a total of six layers. It was a space shooting game I was making. And I had six and I got a warning. Whoa, 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 you probably want to watch it here because this is probably... Uh, poor use of your time. Anyway, so I hope you guys found that interesting. And uh, this has been part six. Uh, come back in part seven, for part seven, where we're going to talk about groupings of shapes together, grouping of shapes. So hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.